Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsan Zavall, and in this video we're going to have a look at the process of lofting in Blender. And we're going to go through what lofting is, how you can do it in Blender, and then some tips and tricks to make sure this is as effective as possible, because there are some things you need to make sure you do right to get this looking the best it can be. So in its most basic sense, lofting is just the process of transitioning from one shape to another as smoothly as possible. And because of this smooth transition, it makes a streamlined or aerodynamic object. And for that reason, this is generally something that you hear about when you're looking at the design of boats or the design of airplanes. And in fact, the best example I can think of this is a boat where you've got the main structural ribs of the boat and then you use the wooden planks to create the outer form of the boat which transitions from each of these rib shapes to the next. So let's have a look and see what we can do with this in Blender. So you can see we've got set up here a triangle, a circle and a square and we want these to transition from one to the next to the next. And in Blender this lofting tool doesn't actually have a separate command, it's just included in part of the bridge edge loop tool. So if I just go into edge mode, click edge, or you can press control and E and bridge edge loops, you can see that it has combined these together. Now it hasn't done this very nicely, but that's because we haven't fiddled with any of the settings yet. And if you go to the bottom left hand corner to where it says bridge edge loops, that's the last function that was done. You can see we've got a number of options here. Now the first one we're going to use is the number of cuts. So if I up this, for example, if I just bring it to one, you'll see that between each of the original objects, so it's the triangle here, the circle there and the square there, we've added one cut. We can up this as much as we want and this is going to make this smoother and smoother. So I'm going to go for 24. Now at this point this is actually looking a bit of a mess. You can see what it's doing here. All the edges are going over each other and the same here at the end of the square and of the triangle. But we'll sort that out in the next bit. So what we can next do is fiddle with the smoothness and that creates a more smooth transition between each of them. Now if you don't have the number of cuts, for example, if you've got it zero, you can still see this doesn't actually change anything. You've got to have the number of cuts as a greater number than zero. And I find in this sort of space, 24 is about right. You can do it as many as you want to make sure it's as smooth as you want it to. And I generally find somewhere around one is probably about best. But you can fiddle around with this as much as you want. With the lower the number, the less smooth the transition. But I would try to avoid any of these overlaps here. So you want to get it at least to, let's say, there. And then anything over one, you start getting a more contracted point in the midpoint between the objects. So just here and here. And again, if you go too far, they'll start to overlap. But as I said, one generally looks about right. Now there are some other things to play around with. Twist means that you get a transition between where each of the points is. So for example, if I do that, you can see it's starting to twist them around. It's probably easiest for you to see that way. I haven't found a massive use for that. I'm sure there are some if you want to sort of have some alien architecture. And then the final one is you've got this profile factor which affects the center point between the two objects. So again, triangle, circle. So the center point would be there. And the higher it is, the more bulged it is. And the lower below one it is, the more contracted it is. And again, that can make some really nice, weird sort of smooth shapes that you can fiddle around with. Not sure what I'd use it for, but maybe some sort of like tube if you're having some sort of organic feeding tube or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, back to zero with that. But you can see how well this does this. It makes a really nice smooth transition where you've got the hard edges or the hard corners slowly transitioning out into the next shape. And if I just go into edge mode and fill that face and then we'll do the same over here. So Alt and click and then F. So I'm just going to click on this and go to shade smooth and I'll just fiddle around. So we'll come to the normals here and then we're going to add auto smoothing. I'm just doing this to sort of give you a good idea of what it would look like in real life. I wouldn't do this when I was modeling for 3D modeling because I want to see all those different edges. But you can see how nice and smooth this works out these objects. So that's lofting. Okay, it uses the bridge edge loops function. It's really cool. So let's have a look at some of the tips and tricks of this because there is a little bit more to it than that. So to go through the tips and tricks of how I made this, it's probably easiest just to go through the process of setting it up. So I'm going to press Shift and A and I'm going to bring in a mesh and I'm going to start by just bringing in a circle that we've got here. And I'm going to change that circle or the number of vertices down to three to make my triangle. And then I'm just going to press R and X to rotate it on the X axis somewhere around there. I'm not going to be too precise with this. And then let's just G and move that over to the side. 
Now I want a square for the other side. So I'm just going to shift an A, mesh, and I could bring in a plane. The other option is to just bring in a circle as well. I'll bring in a plane just to show something different. And again, I'm just going to R to rotate that on the X axis. And then I'm going to come to side view, G to move it to the side. And I do need to delete this face, or I want to delete this face. So I'm going to go into face mode, select the face, delete and importantly don't click face it's going to delete everything you need to click delete and then only face and that's going to leave all the edges so we've got that there and then finally shift and a and i'm going to bring in my circle and i'm going to change the vertices up to 120. now normally i wouldn't use 120 for a circle but that's going to be important for this and we'll talk about why in fact this is probably the most important thing about setting this up then r and x 90 and then I'm just going to G and Z and move that up okay so we've got this set up but at this point it's not actually going to work very well it's going to create a mess and let's have a look at this to explain why now the first thing that we need to do is that we need to bring these together they need to be one object so I'm going to shift select each one I'm shift selecting this one last because it's in the middle and it's then going to keep this origin just something that's good habit and then I'm going to control and J so this is now one object and we can bring this together as we showed you control and E and we're going to go to bridge edge loops and then we can change the number of cuts to make this nice and smooth but you'll notice this looks horrible like what the hell is going on here and there's a reason for that blender can't interpret this very well and the reason for that is that we've got a different number of vertices on each object for this object, we set it up as 120. Obviously, for this one, we've got three, and this one, we've got four. And you might already be able to guess, this is why we set this up at 120, in that 120 is divisible by both three and four. So we can set this up so that it works. So the first thing we're going to do is deal with this square. So with four edges to this, we're going to need 30 more vertices for each edge. Or actually, that wouldn't be accurate. We actually have one, well, two vertices on each edge, but think of it instead of actually just being dividing everything as we've got one point here, and then we need to add another 29. If we actually add in 30, we would have 30 on each side, so 120 plus four. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to go to edge, subdivide, and then we need to up this to 29, not 30, because we've already got one vertex. Now, if I use this slider, I can only go up to 10, but if you click on it, you can go as high as you want. So I can type in 29 there. So we've got our 29 vertices from there to there. So that's the subdivisions plus one for each corner. So effectively we've got 30 and we've got four sets of 30. One there, one there, one there, and then one there. So at the moment we've got 120 vertices. Now we need to do the same for this over here. And for this one, we're going to need 40 vertices on each edge, minusing each one there. So all I'm going to do is select all of them, control and E, subdivide. And then here we're going to type in 39 because essentially it's whatever you need. So we need 40 minus one, so 39. Then A to select everything and then edge or control E to bring up the same menu. And we want bridge edge loops and then we're going to affect this as we did before so we're going to up the number of cuts i'm going to pick 24 just because why not and then we can affect our smoothness as much as we want we do need to be careful we don't go too far otherwise this is going to contort these up to the point where they're not going to make a very nice manifold object so let's uh, put that back down so let's have a look at an example of this and I'm going to point out one other trick that I quite like to use with this. So shift and A and I'm going to bring in a plane, R and X 90 and then let's G and Z so it's a little bit higher up. I just don't like working with this in the way of everything and then I'm going to S and X to scale it a little bit out on the X axis. And then I'm going to control an A and apply the scale because we're going to do something later with beveling and that's going to be quite important to have the scale. Then I'm going to go into vertex mode, shift and A, and I'm going to bring in a circle. And at the moment, this is 120 vertices. That's probably a bit much for this. So I'm just going to bring it down to 80 and then side view and then G. And then I'm going to rotate it to there with R, something like that. And I think looking at that, that's going to need to be a bit bigger. So let's S and do something like that. Yeah, that will look a bit OK. In fact, let's just and move that around somewhere about there 
Right, let's set this up. So first of all, face mode, and then I'm gonna delete and delete only the face, and then I'm gonna go into vertex mode, select those vertices, and because we've got 80 here, we need to have 20 on each of these sides. Well, we now know it's 19. So I'm gonna go to Control and E, and I'm going to subdivide this, and I'm gonna type in 19. So we've got enough vertices there. So go into side view, A to select everything, and then Control E, and then bridge edge loops. And we're gonna up the number of cuts to 24, and this is probably a bit extreme. I'm gonna to go to about there. So what I'm thinking is some sort of aviation jet intake. If you think about it, a lot of those intakes on fighter aircraft can be in a square, and then you've got the outtake being circular. Don't know, maybe this is some sort of jet pack or something like that, where the air intake's here, maybe behind someone's head, and then the jet needs to be pointing down. So let's just go into edge mode. I'm gonna alt select that and then press F and then Alt select there and press F. And if I have a look at this, this looks fairly nice, but from a modeling point of view, I could actually make this a little bit smoother and it will actually aid the transition that's here at this bottom end. So if I just go into edge mode and then press Alt and select that edge there, and then I'm just gonna do the same for this one and this one and this one. What I can do is then press Control and B and bevel this slightly and I'm gonna do something like, I don't know, eight, I always seem to do eight. Let's press C to clamp it, something like there, and then we've got that sort of nice transition. And if I then go to object mode, you can see this hasn't really made much of a difference here. You can't really see any difference to the circle. We can here, but that's because we can see all the faces. Again, if I just shade this smooth and then put the auto smoothing on, you can't really notice that there's more vertices in this bottom bit when you see it in real life. Let's just go to shade flat again so we can see what's going on. And then we can just come to the bottom here, face mode, I to inset that face, and then E to extrude it inwards. And that's something we could fill around with if we wanted to. And then we could I, and then E, and then I. E to extrude a bit more, and then S to scale that in, and then one more. So something like that. And then we can do the same at the top where we've got our intake. Now, if you notice, because we clamped this, there's gonna be two vertices overlapping here, which is not gonna be very nice. So I'm gonna press A, M, and by distance to merge those vertices. In fact, I might up this slightly just to get rid of as many as we need. And then we're gonna go into face mode again. I'm gonna press I to insert that just a tiny amount if I go too far, it's gonna cause problems, which unless you've got mesh machine, it's a bit of a pain to fix. So I'm just gonna I a little bit, S to then scale it in so that we then maintain these nice bevels. And then again, E to extrude that in. And then if we really wanted to, we could do something like Alt and W to bring in box cutter, do a box somewhere like there, and then back. Let's tab into that move that a little bit further back and then let's S and X, I think that's a little bit wide and then V and we can up and bring in some sort of array. Let's just go with there, enter and we've got our vent. Let's, let's G and Y that back a little bit. Some sort of aircraft intake and then we've got the jet that comes out from it. So really nice to have these sort of smooth interesting transitions to make this possible. As always, I hope that's gonna be something you're gonna find useful. It really does make some fantastic smooth transitions and can make some really interesting objects that in other free programs, it's just very difficult to do. And if there's anything else you'd like to see from me on the channel, please do feel free to say so in the comment section. It's always great to hear ideas from you guys, as obviously I want to be making videos that you're gonna find useful. Have a great day, guys.